to you from wherever you're joining us from welcome to international christian center mombasa a place to belong before we start our service today i'd like us to pray and i hope from wherever it is that you are you are doing okay are you fine let us pray father god this day we welcome you into our service and i ask of you god to let your spirit and let your presence be together with us as we worship through music and, uh, and and through the word and through giving lord may you inhabit our praises today we thank you lord for each and everyone who is joining and listening and watching us let us uh, uh, enjoy this service together and also minister to their hearts from wherever they are we pray this believing and trusting in jesus name for today we will have a, a session of worship and and praise through music we will thereafter uh, come and worship again through our giving and lastly we shall have uh, the word of today welcome and enjoy the service
from the earth, from the heights of heaven, you bend down to look at the heavens and the earth. You are amazing, Lord, and we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Church, the Bible says in Psalms 100, I'll just read the first verse, um, rather the first two verses, then I'll, I'll give us an illustration before I call us to pray. Um, Psalms 100 verse 1 and 2, it says, Shout to the Lord, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. All the earth means everything that lives in the earth. Um, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him singing with joy. Now let us pause there for a moment and think about this thing. For those who are married, maybe this will make more sense. Um, for those who are single, think of that one thing that you adore so much. That thing that when you look at, you marvel at it. That thing when you're told, describe this one thing. And you describe it with every adjective that comes along with describing this thing. And you never lack words to describe it. Sometimes you end up being speechless in describing it. Sometimes you end up finding yourself at a place where you even are blown away on how to express it. For me, um, I love food. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a season of prayer and fasting. For me, I'm in a season where, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love food. And this time of prayer and fasting is one of the times where in as much as I spend more time in the Lord, I find myself also having more new recipes thrown into me and I can describe a dish that I'm making even to that taste that you cannot tell. When I taste it, I'm like, yes, this is this ingredient. This is this ingredient. And I describe it so flowerfully in a way that makes you feel like you're salivating, like you're desiring this thing. And church is the same thing when we come to the worship of God. That we have God so marvelous, so awesome in heaven where his throne is. He's seated there surrounded by 24 elders. And all these 24 elders, they cast down their crown and fall on their face to worship God. This light surrounding him, glowing, that there is no shadow in his presence. Who doesn't want to marvel at this thing? Who doesn't want to be part of this beautiful, gorgeous, amazing... Oh, I'm lacking words to even express myself on how beautiful and amazing God is. The one who... The, the clouds are his chariot. Oh, how beautiful our God is. And that... We come into his presence to worship him, to shout before him, to shout of his name, to shout in joy, to scream if at all we could scream, to fall prostrate before him, to raise up hands before him in adoration of who he is. Or think of heaven, the place where we will call home once we are no longer in this world. The streets are of gold. Who doesn't want to live in a place where the streets are of gold? During the days of Solomon, the earth experienced it, where silver was as common as grain, as sand grain, and gold was as common as, as, as rocks. Imagine that depiction in the heaven. That's where we will live. The Bible continues calling us to acknowledge that God, that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people the sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving go into his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name for for the lord is good his unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation and lord we thank you for who you are oh god we thank you for being El Shaddai, Lord. We thank you for being El Rohi, the God who sees everything, the God who is omnipresent, who is here with me, who is there with those who are watching, who is, who is there with those who are worshipping at this point in time, who is surrounding us with his tangible spirit. Oh Lord, how marvelous is you, oh Lord. 
how marvelous you are, almighty King. Even the decoration behind me cannot explain how gorgeous and beautiful and amazing and glorious you are in you, O oh God. Oh, I thank you, Jehovah. I bless you, Lord, even in our worship at this point in time, Lord. I know when we stretch and just touch the hem of your garment, O oh God, in our worship of you, everything is sorted in our lives. That, Lord, we put back everything that is putting us down. We put back everything that is trying to crowd and cloud our judgment, Almighty God, and focus on you. But because, Lord, it is our focus in you, in worship, in praise, in thanksgiving, with joyful hearts, we pour out our hearts to you, Lord, and exalt your holy name, O Jehovah. You reign over our lives and you ensure everything works for good, for we are the ones that trust in you. And I believe, church, those who are listening, those who are being part of this service are people who trust in the Lord. For there they shall be renewed. Their strength will be renewed. Oh, Lord, renew our strength. Strengthen us, oh God. Continue glowing in our lives. Continue radiating inside of us that it is seen by people outside and truly they will know that those are worshippers of the Most High God. I thank you, Jehovah Lord. I thank you, Jehovah Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. And church, even as we get to continue to worship the Lord in music and then pastor will come in and lead us into um, a short word and after that we'll get into our declaration time and I pray that you're going to participate and you're going to partake of the word. And you're going to be ministered fully. And the presence of the Lord will be with you all the days of your lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
in a dry and weary land, I thirst for you. I have beheld of your power and your glory, and my lips will glorify you. Only you are able to satisfy our mouth with good things, Lord. Sunday of the month of February and uh, just being able to share the Word of God with you is such a joy and a pleasure and I'd like to just say a big welcome to each one of you it's uh, not only a joy and a pleasure I am praying that uh, as we get into the Word of God today you'll be ministered unto you'll be encouraged you'll be built up and uh, I believe that you've enjoyed the service so far you've enjoyed the time of preaching uh, I mean not preaching but at the time of worship you've enjoyed the time of uh, ministration and I am ready to preach and I believe that you'll enjoy the time of preaching right at the end I'll ask you uh, that question now that uh, it came out of my mind and uh, my mouth faster than uh, I had wanted and so I am looking forward to an amazing time as we share together today and uh, today is um, allow me is is an intro I want to do an intro to a sermon series that uh, we are doing in the month of uh, February and you need to just grab this you need to get a hold of this because this will impact you and this will influence you so much but today is just an intro 
uh, because uh, well, what what you're doing today is just uh, seeking to encourage and to build up uh, you know worship unto the Lord uh, we normally do that at uh, our in-person service at KPM Baraki we seek to just spend some little more time than usual on the first Sunday of the month in worship in adoration in, in, in honoring the name of the Lord and so I encourage you to do that and so I'll be preaching a shorter sermon and uh, I, I will just call us to, to a time of worship and a time of praise now having said that having said that uh, you know let me go ahead and uh, and uh, just uh, talk about prayer and fasting because we are in the middle of prayer and fasting do you know which day this is think about it this is day number 15 and uh, you know of our 21 days of prayer and fasting and I hope that you've been getting the video devotionals that you're part of the whatsapp group that uh, we formed and you joined you're part of that and you're getting the, the, the daily uh, video devotionals you're able to listen to those you're able to capture the word and you're able to pray together with us because uh, day number 15 such an amazing time god has walked over uh, got walked it with us god has sustained us and encouraged us and uh, given us the strength to be able to continue to pray to fast and uh, you know just uh, take water and maybe a, a juice or a tea um, as uh, we seek to just go through these days um, and allow me to say that uh, we are trusting god to just do amazing things in our lives through our lives and for us uh for us you know those three things uh that that god will work through us that god will use us as his servants as his uh you know sons and daughters across the nations of the earth to be able to bring transformation and change we are seeking god and saying god here we are we are vessels that are available to be used by you to impact and influence our nation to be used by you to impact and influence our continent to be used by you to impact and influence the nations of the earth saying yes to the father and uh, giving ourselves to him uh, i don't know whether you have a prayer journal i encourage that in one of the video devotionals to get a prayer journal and to just begin to write those those impossible prayers that we have those things that look impossible because one of the purposes of a prayer journal you're able to go back and see i prayed this on uh, the 30th of january and god came through God answered I prayed this on the 31st and God answered because uh, I, one of the things that, that uh, is so powerful in uh, just demonstrating how real God is is a prayer journal as you go back and as you look at things that you have prayed and God has answered one time I picked my prayer journal and I was interacting with a man uh, who you know claimed to be an atheist and I told him let me let me show you something and so I picked my prayer journal and we opened and we began to go through it and uh, and uh, you know he could see the dates he could see the dried up ink and all that and so he knew for sure i had not written that necessarily to talk to him um, i mean really why would i do that but but uh, when we looked at the prayer journal i asked him you know because all these things have been answered some of them to the minutest of details i asked him do you want to tell me this is chance because chance can happen once chance can happen two times chance can happen three times but when you get to 10, 15, 20 times, that's no longer a chance. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. There is a God in heaven who hears us and turns situations around. Who deals with things, even those that look impossible. And so get your prayer journal, get your praying shoes on. Let's continue to seek the Lord because we'll get to the end. We'll get to the end of this. And um, having said that, I need to go ahead and pray. Uh, but before I pray, I've just seen something else in my notes. Uh, something else in my notes that I'd like to mention uh, this coming weekend uh, will be uh, you know our fast our 21 days of prayer and fasting are coming to an end on the on the midnight of the 12th uh, let me let me just explain that a little bit on the morning of the 12th which is the night of uh, the 11th Saturday night but you see saturday night saturday is a day of prayer so uh, you know midnight we change to a new day and that new day uh, will be you know our 22nd day and so we'll be breaking our fast but i'm asking us to do several things number one we'll be sharing together in communion on sunday morning We'll be sharing together in communion on Sunday morning. And so go ahead, um, you know, get your communion set ready, get your elements ready. We'll share that on Sunday morning. And uh, don't break your fast before we share together in communion. And then after that, you can go ahead and uh, break your fast. But listen, 
you don't break a 21 day fast by eating a full meal you will be in trouble in fact allow me to say this it's harder to break a fast than to begin a fast and so please please i beg you i beseech you by the masses of god please do not do not aim to eat a full meal on the 12th it will not be possible and even if you do because your mouth can chew and you can swallow it, it will bring issues because your stomach has forgotten what it is to digest food and so you you need to break your body back into uh, into into eating and um, I will be explaining, I'll be giving us a guideline how to break a fast um, in the course of the week. Please ensure you're part of the WhatsApp group so that, uh, you know, so that we can ensure that uh, you have all the information. How do you join that WhatsApp group? Just send a message to plus 254-711-443-459 and say, send me the message, send me the link so that I can join in and be part of the, uh, you know, the WhatsApp group. And there you'll be able to get all the information on how to break the fast hallelujah let's go ahead and uh, get into the word of god and uh, i'm going to read the bible i'm going to read a verse and then i'm going to pray and then we're going to uh, to to share the sermon the bible says in the book of psalm 84 verse number 10 the bible says better is one day <coughs> better is one day in the courts in your courts the, the, the psalmist here is speaking to God. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Heavenly Father, it's my prayer that your word will powerfully speak to us today. And I pray that Lord, you will challenge us and you will bring us to a place of uh, just choosing that which is better. Minister to us, Lord, and May your word come alive. Direct us. Help us. And Lord, help us to understand what it is that you're saying to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we get into the word of God today, I am, I'm going to just do a short, short, short someone here. I, I trust. <laughs> uh you know as as a way of intro of our sermon series for the month of february and i just want you to think about the verse that we have just read better is one day better is one day in the courts of the lord i mean that that's that's a profound statement right there and uh, when you think about it when you pause and and think about it you know it begins to tell you that there's a better way of living or there's a better way of doing uh, something because the word better is, literally means that it means better <laughs> better than that, that means there's something that is not as good as what we are talking about and throughout the month of uh, february what we'll be doing is we'll be talking about better what is better how do i choose better when it comes to decision making, when it comes to living, when it comes to the way I do things, what is better? Because we'll be looking at the Bible and we'll be saying, here is a better way. Here is a better choice. Here is a better you know, approach to decision making, to, to living. There was a TV series in Kenya about 12 years ago uh, that used to be called Better Days. And allow me to just say, uh, if you choose better, you are going to actually have better days. Better days than better days. You are going to, to just see a transformation and a change in your life. Because the word of God is filled with wisdom. It's filled with insight. It's filled with direction. And so would you want to live better? Would you want to make better decisions? Would you want to j just uh, uh, come to the place where you're living a better life than what you're living today? The Bible has the wisdom. Uh, to, to lead you in that direction now today ju just pausing here and talking about today the psalmist is saying better is one day in the courts of the lord than elsewhere than anywhere else in fact he puts a figure to it he says than a thousand elsewhere can you imagine that i don't think any one of us possibly i mean it, it can't be true <laughs> there is no one listening to me right now who has lived uh you know who has lived for a thousand years but i can come down i can come down in the number of years and come to the place of saying a thousand years how long is a thousand uh, i mean not a thousand years a thousand days how long is a thousand days a thousand days is approximately three years plus now allow me to say this the psalmist is saying one day in the presence of god is better than you know three years elsewhere just one day 
one day in the presence of God. Because when the Bible speaks about the court of the Lord, what he's talking about is actually the presence of God. You see, uh, the, the, uh, in the Old Testament, for the children of Israel, the temple uh, had courts, and the temple was where the Ark of the Covenant used to be, and the temple was a place where they believed that God dwelt. And indeed, uh, you know, God dwelt there physically. There are things that used to happen. Uh, you know, if you went into the temple without being careful, or the tabernacle without being careful, you know, for example, it's a reason why the high priest used to wear bells and uh, would, uh, and because they would go into the presence of God, and when things go quiet, you know, something has happened, and you would, uh, you know, anoint or, or set apart the next high priest so that the, they would go in there. You didn't just go into the presence of God; it would be disastrous. Now, allow me to say this: the psalmist is saying, "Better is one day in the presence of God at the temple courts than anywhere else." than anywhere else why would the psalmist say this as i said he's talking about the presence of god and how being in the presence of god is good in fact the bible says that uh, in his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore and for you to be able to experience those then you need to come to the place where you choose that you choose better you choose what is better um I i'd like to say something to us here when you look at the life of King David, um, well, he's not the writer of this psalm. This was written uh, by, you know, some other people. Uh, but uh, when, when you look at the life of David, he was very passionate about worshipping God and living, you know, for God and for God's purposes. And when you look at him, and, and today I want us to learn from King David. When you look at him, you see that this man accomplished so much. He lived his life, even though he was a weak man. He had issues. He had challenges he had problems he wasn't a good father he wasn't a very good man uh, you know in some of the things that he did but because of his passion uh, pursuit and his passion for the things of god the bible says this in acts chapter 13 verse number 36 talking about david it says now when david had served god's purposes in his own generation he fell asleep he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed when he had served God's purposes in his own day. Meaning David served God's purposes. I want that. I want to be able to serve God's purposes and finish everything that God ordained for me. In a different place, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. And so we begin to see, what, what, what is this thing that set David apart? What is this thing that enabled David to accomplish the things that he accomplished? What is this? And I point it and say... It's because he lived passionately for God and he accomplished so much for God, so much. He made a difference in the nation of Israel. Why? Because of his passion for God. His passion for God's purposes, his passion for God's presence. He was a man after God's own heart, as I've told you, and he ended up doing great exploits, great exploits. How did he do this? How was David able to do this? How can I serve God's purposes in my day? And end up accomplishing everything that I'm supposed to accomplish. How can I end up doing the things that David did, making a difference, building, you know, if uh, it's a legacy, if I would call it that way, a legacy of a man that was so passionate uh, after God's purposes? How can I fight battles in this day and be able to win and be victorious? Because really, what we look at David and what we begin to see is a man, for example, working for the government of Kenya who you couldn't bribe. Because of his focus and commitment. A man that ensured that things were done the right way. Because David says in a certain place, talking in the Psalms, he says that uh, he, you know, just righteousness is what he seeks after. And he detests people who do evil and people who are wicked. It's a man who you could depend you know, to accomplish things, great things. You know, and uh, it's not a man who would fight you. And there's a scripture that I want us to read today that will help us understand this. David was not a man that would fight you. You know, to, to destroy you or, or to cause you not to be who you're supposed to be. In fact, when you came against David, many times David would let you be. If you wanted his position, if you wanted, you know, to, to overthrow him, he would let you. He did. He did that with his son. Just walked away. And so I'm pointing at David today and I'm saying to us, what we begin to see is that if you want to live a better life, then you need to choose what is better. And what is better? Choosing the presence of God. Choosing the worship of God. Choosing to honor and glorify God. Choosing to be in the presence of God in all that you do. Second Samuel chapter number 15. If you begin to read that from verse number 26, you will see a story of uh, Absalom. Absalom was David's son. And uh, Absalom 
sought to overthrow his father um, and he kicked him out of uh, being king and when uh, King David realized that uh, Absalom was going to overthrow him David did not fight with his son because of the, his love for the people he did not want bloodshed in the city and what we see is that David fled from uh, he fled from his son and, and went uh, you know into uh, you know the, the wilderness so to say he, he just ran away but David was not running, running away because he couldn't fight. Because David had a mighty army. David had what was called the mighty men of David. They could be able to bring down Absalom like this. But David chose not to fight because of who he was. Because of who he was. And uh, the best illustration, uh, the illustration I have of uh, the life of David is found in Psalm 84. I know I read verse number 10. But, but I'd like to just read from verse number 1 to verse number 10 again. And uh, I'm reading this because I want to show you ju just who David was. Because if you read that chapter, and I want you to read that chapter. I told you I'm going to preach a, a, a short sermon, so I don't want to read that chapter. Uh, but uh, if you read there, you begin to see the difference between Absalom. And that's how many of us live. Many of us live like Absalom. We do things like Absalom. We pursue the, th you know, we, we end up doing things like the way Absalom did them. And so I'm giving you an assignment to read that chapter so that you can see it for yourself. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse number 1 to 26. Absalom was a man who, pre who was a pretender. As though he cared about the king, but what he want, he cared about is himself and his position. It's, it's people who, you know, will come in the office and pretend as though they are helping you, but they are looking for an opportunity to destroy you. They are looking for an opportunity to take your position. They are looking for an opportunity to advance before you. But allow me to say this, that is not the better way to live. There is a different way of living. There is a better way of living. And so that's what people do. Number two, uh, when you look at uh, the life of Absalom, you see a man who pretended to serve the people even though he was self-serving. And many people do that. You pretend to be serving people, but you're looking for a way to be promoted. You're looking for a way to get ahead of people. You're looking for a way you know, to end up benefiting yourself. That's not a good way to live. There is a better way to live. I hope you begin to get the drift. There is a better, there is a better way to live. Um... Absalom appeared to be humble, pretended to be humble, but he was a man with a haughty spirit. And many people do that. Many people do that. You know, they pretend to be humble, but uh, really what they have is a haughty spirit. They, they, they are prideful. They are arrogant. They think about themselves. They think of themselves better than other people. They will cut you in traffic. They will cut you in the office. You know, if, if possible, they, they will do everything that they can to destroy you, even in your home state. This happens with brothers. This happens with sisters. This happens with parents. This happens, you know, with their children. This happens with children, with their parents. It happens. It happens. People who pretend even though they are filled with pride and arrogance and thinking that they are better than other people. I am saying to us today, there is a better way of living. There is a better way of living. Absalom talked about worshipping God, but he was not a worshipper of God. He walked in false worship, his own worship. He worshipped himself and he wanted people to worship him. And allow me to say, many times we do that, don't we? You do a project in the office or maybe a church you're serving and pastor doesn't recognize you or your boss doesn't recognize you. And before long, you're so full of pain and bitterness and you never ever want to serve again. Why? Because you weren't recognized. Allow me to say this. That's false worship. You were seeking to be worshipped. You were seeking to be, you know, exalted. And because that didn't happen, you, you feel so bad and you walk away and you never serve in that position. That was the spirit of Absalom. And allow me to say this. There's a better way of living. There's a better way of living. And I'm going to read for us uh, from the book of uh, Psalm 84 from verse number 1. Let me, let me read this and then I will show you the, the, the difference between David and Absalom. And then we're going to uh, just bring this to a conclusion. Psalm 84, the Bible says, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near the altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. 
Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And so we begin to see an example of the life of David. Listen to this. When you look at that psalm and you look at the life of David out of uh, 2 Samuel chapter 15, here is what you see. You see a man who had, uh, you know, let me just describe David. Because this is what we see. A man that was so desperate for the presence of God. A man that lived with a hunger and a desire for the presence of God. That literally, verse number 2 of Psalm 84 describes David. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. David was a man after God's own heart. That's what the Bible says about him. And here are four things that are different from Absalom that we see in David because of his hunger and his yearning for God. Number one, we see no desire and interest in David to be fast, to be recognized, to be adored. He simply wants God, God's will, God's ways and God's purposes. Absalom wanted to be fast. Absalom wanted, you know, to be fast. David didn't want to be fast. Why? Because David just wanted God's will. David just wanted God's presence. David just wanted, you know, his yearning was for God. And I say this, choose better. Choose better. Choose David's way. Choose not to be fast, but to put God fast. That's a better way of living. And I call you today to that place. It's a better way of living. Number two, David had no focus on self he was thinking about others it's a reason why he chose not to fight for the sake of the people of the city it's a reason why he chose not to fight for the sake of the people who are with him it's a reason why he chose not to fight why david was not self-serving he was not self-seeking but we saw that absalom was different Ab absalom appeared as though he was serving people even though he was serving himself david however is a man that sought after and wanted and just desired to see god's people safe and well and blessed there's a better way of living. Choose better. Why? Because of your hunger and your desperateness for God's purposes. My soul yearns, even faints for God. That's who David was. And because of his hunger and his yearning and his desire for God and his desperateness for God and God's purposes, we see a man who chose better. We see a man who chose better. Number, number three, David was humbled and humiliated. He's running away. Even when he is abused and called names, we see David just keeping on going. Why? Because David, unlike Absalom, because Absalom appeared humble even though he was haughty. But David was genuinely a humble man. A humble man whose heart and longing was for God. He wanted to know God. He just wanted to walk in God's purposes and do God's will. Even when David fell into sin. Because sometimes people say David wasn't a, a, such a good man. You know, he was a man of sin. Yes, even when he was caught up in sin. What did he do? Psalm 51. David humbled himself before God. He humbled himself before God. Because that's who David was. He was a man of humility. And I say to you today, haughtiness is not good. Humbleness is better. Oh, yes. Oh yes, don't choose pride, don't choose uh, you know, arrogance, choose better, choose humility, choose humility. Here is something else we see with David. Number four, we see a worshipper who abandoned himself and his life and his hopes and his dreams to God and what God wanted for him. David goes away, he leaves the, the, the kingship, he goes away because he says, you know what, God is at work in my life. God is the one who gave me, God is the one who made me king. And if God brings, wants me to be king, he will bring me back. You know what, I'm not going to fight over this. And he walked away, and he walked away. And did God bring him back? Yes, God brought him back. And when God brought him back, David praised the Lord. He didn't praise himself, he didn't praise his army. David just praised and worshipped God because that's who he was. He, he was a worshipper of the king of the king of kings and the lord of lords and i say to you today my friends be a worshiper because rather than worship yourself or seek to be exalted or seek to be honored or seek to be exalted by men choose to worship god choose to honor god because that's better it's a better way of living it's a better way of living and i say to you today choose better 
when you're given choices please choose better better is one day in the courts of the lord than a thousand days elsewhere and so when you're given an opportunity by life i challenge you today to choose better i challenge you to choose better and so how do you and i ensure that we are able to live one day in the courts of the lord one day in the presence of god several years ago if you would have asked me to give you an answer to that question here's what I've to, i would have told you i would have told you just ensure that you have a devotional habit just ensure that you're praying that you're seeking god you know in the morning and uh, you're doing that in the evening and then you're able to just go ahead with your normal life but i've come to the place of realizing that normal is a lie there's nothing like normal life there's nothing like secular life all those are lies of the enemy that cause us to end up at the place where we are living uh, uh, you know with, with the double personalities you you are spiritual on a sunday morning and then monday to to saturday you there's nothing spiritual about you you know but we can't continue to live like that we need to come to the place where we realize that there's nothing like spiritual and secular god wants you you know the whole of you living for him better is one day that one day you live in the presence of god and you experience all that god has for you and you know what you can do that on a daily basis you can experience god and walk in god's purposes you can be all that god desires and bring glory and praise and honor to the living god allow me to call you today to that place where you seek to honor and worship god and walk in his purposes because really i mean think about it you are the temple of the holy spirit and so there's no choosing you know a secular and then coming back on a sunday morning and saying i want to be spiritual there's nothing like that you're the temple of the holy spirit be all that god desires of you to be live in the way that god wants you to live walk in the purposes of god honor and glorify god it's possible it is possible and for that to be possible for you to be able to choose better for you to be able to live one day in the courts of the living God, one day in the presence of God, you know, for you to be able to walk in all that God desires of you, I'd like to call you to three habits that will help you be able to do it. Number one, number one, seek to live in constant communion with the living God. Seek to live in constant communion with the living God. Is that possible? Is that even possible? Allow me to say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. How do you do that? You practice the presence of God wherever you go. I, I gave a definition of worship one time to our church. I was teaching on, on worship and I, and I gave them a definition of worship that, that, that is very powerful that I'd like to give us today. Because I said, and, and this is uh, my, my thinking and my perspective of uh, what worship is. Worship is, you know, worship is becoming aware of the presence of God and responding to that awareness becoming aware of the presence of God and responding to that awareness and I say to us today it's possible to live in constant awareness an ending awareness being sure that God is present because God is present wherever you go wherever you go God is present and you can be able to commune with him you can be able to communicate with him you can be able to live in constant communication constant communication I have a couple friend of mine and uh, th literally this couple the husband and wife they live in constant communication they are always sh sharing something sending a joke com you know sharing a meme and uh, sharing prayer requests talking about how their day is going they just keep their messages going throughout the day throughout the day as in their whatsapp are always beeping they're always sharing things they're always sharing things even taking photos sometimes even uh, giving each other voice notes you know and they live in constant communication and allow me to say if a couple can do that it's possible for you to do that it's possible for you to live in constant communication with god as you go through the day when you see something pray about it when you see something you don't like bring it up to god as, as i was coming here um you, you know as i was driving here i saw this gentleman on the way he was he was drunk he was staggering on the road because he was completely done and uh, i looked at him and the first thought that came to my mind is how will he get home but then immediately after that you know i just lifted him up before god in prayer and i was like god would you set that man free because you came jesus you you came to set the captives free set that man free bring him to a place of freedom that he may know you and experience you so that he will not be drunk with wine that <laughs> that leads to debauchery but he will be filled with the holy spirit and walk in the purposes of god i lifted him up before god when i was sparking my 
Mecca, there was this Asian man that was coming from uh, the, the temple and I looked at him and I was like, God, that's a man that desires to know God, that desires to walk in worship, that desires to honor and glorify God. And I lifted him up in prayer and I was like, God, help that man. Help him to walk in your purposes. Help him to know you. Help him to live for you, Jehovah God. And you see what I'm saying here? You can live in constant communication with God. And so, uh, you know, I give you the definition of worship. Worship is becoming aware of God's presence and responding to that awareness because I know God is with me and that he will never leave me nor forsake me wherever I go. And so I can be able to lift up prayer to him and I can be able to lift up praise to him and I can be able to lift up worship to him and God will be honored and God will be glorified and God will be praised. And so that's how we live. And I call us to develop that habit. Habit number two. Habit number two, be quick. You know, develop a habit of quickly responding to God quickly responding to God. I believe, for example, in praying for that drunk man, and I believe in praying for that man uh, who was coming out of the temple. It's not something that came from me. It's something that began with the Spirit of God because it's the Spirit of God who stars us. In fact, the Bible says that uh, the Spirit of God is the one who draws us to God. He's the one who convicts us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And I believe he's the one who leads us. He's our helper. He's our teacher. And so when you, when, when he lays a prayer thought in your, in your mind, when he lays a worship thought in your mind, don't ignore Ignore it. Don't ignore it. So many people, when I was preparing for this someone, I talked with a few people and uh, we realized that so many times we have those nudgings, nudgings to pray, nudgings to worship, nudgings to exalt the name of the Lord, nudging to, to, to read the Bible, nudging to seek God. But many times we don't do it. Why? We are not quick in responding to God. And I tell you today, you need to develop, you need to develop the habit of quickly responding, quickly responding to God, quickly turning to God so that you can walk in all that God desires. Develop those two habits. Develop those two habits because we need to live with an awareness of God's presence wherever we go and responding to that awareness because worship is rep responding to that awareness. Worship is responding to that awareness. It's not the songs that you can sing. It's not how you know flat you can lie on the floor. It's not how you can kneel and how long you can kneel. It's not how high you can lift up your hands. It's responding to the awareness of God's presence. And I call you today to respond to God's awareness. And number three, my prayer is we will live daily with the desperation for God's presence. We will live daily with the desperation for God's presence. David was a man after God's own heart. And it's a reason why he lived a better life than Absalom. It's a reason why he lived a better life than so many other people in his day. It's a reason why God chooses to identify with David. Chooses to identify with David. He said of David that there shall be you know that there shall always be somebody on the throne of david's kingdom why i mean jesus is really king in david's kingdom so to say why would god choose a man and exalt him so to say and lift him to such a, such a place because this man was a worshiper of god and he lived with that desperation for god's presence a desperation for god's will and god's guidance allow me to say this have you ever been to a place where you were given food that, uh, you know, you looked at and you were like, I can't eat this? I remember one time finding myself in a Chinese buffet restaurant. I'd visited uh, the United States of America and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I was taken to this Chinese buffet. They have amazing food. But here is the thing. Uh, as I was walking around reading the labels, I saw, I saw uh, you know, one place where the, the serving dish was full of meats. And I looked at the meat and there was, smell, you know, they had such a great aroma. And, uh, but then I looked at the label and it said frog legs, frog legs. And I was like, no, I can't eat frog legs. But here is the thing, the people I was with ate frog legs. And they said how sweet they are and how amazing they are. But I couldn't eat. Why? Because I've never lived in a place where they eat frog legs. If you found yourself in Congo, they eat snails. And some places in China, they eat snails. Allow me to say this, that might sound like it's grossing you out, but let me say this, it's because the people have developed an appetite for it. If you live in a place where they eat certain foods, you are going to develop an appetite. You're going to eat those things. And allow me to say, if you live with a desperateness for the presence of God, a hunger for God and for God's presence and for God's will, God will, will begin to fill you and you will come to the place where nothing else feels or, or tastes better, if I would say so. David actually says, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
taste and see that the Lord is good. I call you today to that place where you taste. Because when you experience God, you will never want anything less. We are in our day number 15 of our prayer and fasting time. And I'd like to say, at the beginning, food was so attractive. But I've gotten to the place where prayer is now more attractive. I want to pray. I want to experience God. I want to walk in all that God desires of me. That, that's what I'm talking about. A hunger for God that takes you to a place that you've never been. You're able to experience God. And you're able to walk in all that God has for you. I pray that you will develop those, uh, those three habits. You'll be a man who seeks to, deal, uh, to live in communion with God. You'll be a man who quickly responds to God. When, the, when you sense those stirrings of the Spirit, when the Spirit of God begins to move over you, when, when God begins to cause you to pray for somebody or to worship God or to think about God or to pick your Bible, you're going to do that and you're going to live with a desperate hunger for God and for His presence. Oh, the courts of the Lord will be what you long for and what you desire. Allow me to say this. When you develop those three habits, they will help you be better and live better. They will help you be better, live better. You will not be like Absalom. You will be like David, a man after God's own heart. And let me say, when you live that way, life is going to be better. Your decisions are going to get better. The things that you do and the way that you do them is going to get better. Your experiences and connections with people will get better. Your relationship with people will get better. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll help us to choose better. Because better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better, my Father, to be that which you desire more than be a man or a woman that walks in arrogance and pride, who is self-seeking, self-serving. We don't want to be like Absalom. And so help us today to be like David, to be like you, Lord Jesus. Draw us to yourself because today we are choosing what is better. We are choosing your presence. We are choosing the ministry of your Holy Spirit. We are choosing your wisdom and your guidance. We are choosing you, O oh God. And so help us, my Father. Help us, my King. In Jesus' name. And so my brothers and sisters, may the Lord fill you with His Spirit and may the Lord cause you to choose better and cause you to walk in His purposes. I commit you into His hands and I trust God to transform you, to change you, to impact you and to cause you to be the man that He wants you to be and to cause you to be the woman that He wants you to be and cause you to be the business person, the parent, whoever you are that He wants you to be. Choose better. Choose better. God's presence. Choose worship. God bless you so much. We'll see you next Sunday. Um, I'm inviting you to go ahead and uh, and sing along to this next song. And as this song plays, we will leave you. We will let you just worship God. And when the song comes to an end, just go ahead and, and just continue to exult and honor God. Because I commit you into the hands of the Lord. I invite you to choose better. Choose worship. Bye-bye.
Church, I believe that you have enjoyed your time in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit has ministered to you, has shown you things that you need to do and be part of, things that you need to change and things that are of encouragement to you. And now we get into another time of worship through our giving. And before I welcome Alice, let us pray and uh, dedicate these resources to the Lord. Father, we thank you. For you have been gyre over our lives and lord we come back with thanksgiving of our tithes we come back to honor you with our fast foods we come back with a sacrifice of praise lord as we offer our offerings to you oh god i pray that lord you will multiply these resources for the work of your ministry and lord you will credit to the account to those who have given and those who do not have lord continue providing for them for i believe they've given of themselves in one way or the other oh god i pray lord that you will multiply these resources for the glory and honor of your holy name in Jesus' name I pray, believing. Amen. Alice, take it up. We would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. And for account, you write offering or tithe or special offering, or fast routes, or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can send an RTGS or write a check to International Christian Center Mombasa. Our account number is 100,0-9233. And our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. And finally, you can give through our website at iccmombasa.org. 
Simply click on the giving button and follow the instructions on the page. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for worshipping God through your giving. And on uh, to our announcements this week. We would like to welcome you to our prayer service that, go, that, that happens every Tuesday from 7.30 to 9 p.m. We answer to the call that men ought to pray without ceasing. Please join us as we pray and as we seek God's face every Tuesday at 7.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, the second announcement is our prayer circle. Every day we gather uh, on Zoom to pray for this country, to pray for the nations of Africa and any other thing that we would be led to. We would, would like to welcome you to join us even as we seek God's face uh, onto uh, the prayer circle. 